Welcome everybody. If you're new, hello. Welcome to my channel. If you are returning or you are clicking this from the link in the Google Sheets, um, I should probably shut up and get into it because you want to hear about Beedrill. You don't want to hear about my other bullshit that I have to say. Also, I think these are different fonts. No, they're the same size. So, Beedrill, uh, big, big changes here. So, um, first things first. The non-mega evolution is much, much stronger. So something you'll see in Pokemon Sweltering Sun. So for example, if I click Mega or uh, Control F Mega, and I just look at all the Megas, Mega Pidgeot. So far, there's only there's only so many Megas that are done. Uh, Mega Pidgeot, uh, Mega Alakazam, uh, Mega Slowbro, etc. All right, I'm not gonna name all the Megas, but you guys get the idea. Uh, the base form has genuine not even like situational niche vi viability although that's still good enough uh it has genuine viability over the mega evolution despite the mega being much uh well in general cases you know there's a lot of different situations for example pinzer has different typing uh, it's bug ground and it turns into bug flying so you know you kind of want to you know and also another big deal for megas is that the pre-mega or the base form can hold an item while the mega cannot which is a pretty big deal um so you have different abilities sometimes different typings different stats whatnot that makes the base form viable despite having 100 less base that total than the mega um and so and, and vice versa meaning that the mega will be better than you know for example i'm not going to talk about megas as a whole i'm going to talk about beedrill let me be, be more specific um base beedrill is amazing by the time you get mega beedrill light or, or rather beedrill light um it's going to be amazing and you're going to be using it a lot of, in a lot of bad battles don't get me wrong i mean the speed boost are alone is a is already like the the, the giant Speed stat is already like a big enough reason to use it, even if Mega Beedrill, even if Base Beedrill is technically stronger. But there might be a lot of battles where you don't need that 160 base speed. There might be a lot of training battles where your Beedrill at 121 base speed is fast enough, um, or, or or some other things. So let me get into that. Um, and of course, the pre evolutions are stronger because they have all at level 10 and 20, but I will get into that towards the latter half of the video because that's stuff that I think is kind of hopefully, hopefully self explanatory. Um, I really hope that is self-explanatory. Um, so, yeah, uh, we have Beedrill, Mega Beedrill. Uh, base Beedrill is much quicker and much stronger, obviously, given its appearance. I mean, look at this motherfucker. Um, the Dex says that he flies at high speed, so he is fast. Um, he is a fucking bee, hornet, wasp thing, and so he should be able to fly super quick, despite all uh, admittedly looking pretty fucking clunky like he has a very den, den one design like his body plan is kind of awkward like his drills are too big he doesn't look very aerodynamic however mega b drill is fucking slick and, and 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 should definitely be even faster i mean in the real games 145 is a totally reasonable number but of course speed as a whole is much higher in this hack so if you go over to this handy speed tier guide you can see where b drill and mega b drill rack stack up um, against the current changes obviously pokemon will keep on getting added to this but as of right now mega b drill is the fastest pokemon in the hack there will be faster pokemon uh deoxys ninjask Deoxys Speed, rather. Deoxys Speed, Ninja Esk, uh, Rotom, Base Form Rotom, and then maybe a few more will be faster. Um, but of course, 160 is definitely in the top. It's going to be one of the five best Pokemon to hack for sure. Um, and that's incredible. So that's already one, a really good asset. However, Base Speed Drill is also really good because it actually uh, outspeeds um, what will be a, a semi common speed tier of 120. There will be more 120 months. Speed Drill outspeed those, outspeeds them by one point, which is really, really handy. Um, base Speed Drill, of course. So that's great to have. Um, and of course, it has a very powerful attack set of 119, which is even more impressive when you consider the move pool and the ability Ruthless. So if you are new here, the ability Ruthless is a reskinned version of Sniper. However, I have reworked it uh massively so um all of these moves that used to be high crit rate or like that makes sense to be high crit rate like you know they're slashing type moves um are again now 50 percent critical hit rate so if you equip a scope lens on your b drill all of these moves will always crit uh and with, with the ability ruthless those critical hits become 50% stronger. So instead of a 1.5 times boost from the crit, meaning, okay, so for example, these moves are all 70 base power. This whole row right here, these are really good. I'll get into these later. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to talk about these ones. Uh, if you're looking at the visuals, of course, this would help. Um, if you are a background listener, no shame in that I am as well. I do that a lot of the time with videos, but if you, you know, if you want to, if you're confused as to what I'm talking about, you can come and look at the video. You'll see what I mean. Uh, these, these moves, also, a lot of you guys probably know this stuff already. Uh, so I'm not going to dwell on it too much because a lot of you guys uh, are probably relatively familiar with my work and you probably already know what ruthless is and you probably already know all the 50 percent crit moves and all that stuff but for the sake of uh i don't know the sake of i don't okay, think of a word but <laughs> all right point is i have to cover it anyways so 
again, these will always crit, and they are, they are 70 base power, so without Ruthless, you'd be having 105 base power, but with Ruthless, these moves become 158 base power, So, and they're 100% accurate. So, um, Beedro has access to Stab, X Scissor, and Stab, Cross Poison, all right? And then it has access to Psycho Cut, Cross Chop, dr Cross Chop, sorry, Drill Run, Night Slash, slash Drill Peck, uh, for cover. It has access to all of these moves besides Leaf Blade, Dragon Claw, Shadow Claw, Razor Shell, and Jagged Edge. Otherwise, it has Drill Peck, Drill Run, Cross Poison, Cross Chop, X Scissor, Laceration Slash, Night Slash, Psycho Cut. Right? Those are all the 50% crit, hit moves, crit rate moves it has. Uh, so it has Dual Stab, and then it has amazing fighting ground coverage, which again covers really nicely what resists um, Bug and Poison. So you're using your stab moves, and you're using those two coverage moves most likely. But of course, you have other coverage moves, which are also situationally very, very powerful, um, and they are also nice to have. So depending on whatever point in the game you're at, or or whatever your other team members are, for example, if you cover those types with another teammate, maybe you don't want to run them. If you don't have a psychic type, maybe you want cycle cut. You don't have a steel type, you don't run laceration, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, um, I would have liked to stagger these moves a little more. Uh, technically, I could. I could have it so that he only learns, like, for example, Night Slash and Drill Peck and Laceration, and then he learns Cycle Cut, Cross Chop, and, uh, well, Drill Run doesn't level up, so that wouldn't work. I would say it would, then it would be even. Uh, it would be even three and three, but I actually was considering doing that uh, at live, but I will not do that. Uh, however, point being, uh, Ruthless with 119 base attack and 121 base speed is extremely, extremely powerful. Uh, Beedrill is great, uh, alone, just for that sake. So. You might look at Mega Beedrill and be like, well, it's even faster and even stronger, has adaptability, isn't that just better? It's not, because adaptability, number one, only boosts your stab moves. Um, and Bug Poison, although I did buff Bug type offensively, uh, Fairy Ghost and Fighting no longer resist Bug. Um, so there's also a, a couple of Ice type. Uh, ice type. Ice type has three resistances, and then Bug type is now... Uh, like has three less offensive resistances. So I've changed bug to be better offensively with three types changes. And then ice is that better defensively with three type changes. If you guys are not uh, new here and you don't know about that. Uh, so you can you can go on that sheet and read. I'm gonna eventually make a video covering those changes to explain it better because these changes are not good enough, but they, I do have a little bit of changes here to talk. So um, yeah, uh, that being said, bug. So fairy doesn't matter because you have poison stab, although there are fairies that are neutral or even downright immune. So it is nice to be not, uh, Although the ones that are immune are gonna still resist your bug move, but uh, yeah. And of course, you have drill run for those. Uh, I'm talking about still fairy types, if you couldn't tell. Um, which there's a decent, you know, uh, I think three, maybe four. Um, I can't. Yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah. B drill is great. Super sword and super fucking powerful. Super strong. Um, so other ruthless moves that you have access to. So you have, of course, all of those coverage moves. Uh, I was talking about adaptability. Sorry, I'm getting very all over the place right now. Um, so Mega B Drill is much quicker and stronger. So for example, um, base B Drill with a ruthless boosted cross poison um, that always crits with a scope lens is going to be probably still doing less damage than a uh, gunk shot Mega B Drill. Let me actually run that calc on something. I'll just do it on a bomb snow for the sake of it. Unchanged stats, but obviously Obama snow will have much better. Oh god, the typing itself fucked up. Let's just. Uh... Yeah, run this. I mean, obviously, the stats will be much different. I'm just using a generic one just to show damage. So, um, you have Mega B Drill uh, with um, 155 attack. All right. Um, so, Poison Jab is 80 still. It's not changed. However, Cross Poison is 70, but it crits. So, uh, and let's give it. Well, this is Mega, so this doesn't matter. So, so. Let's just say Poison Jab, because I would talk about Gunshot, because Gunshot is very powerful. Gunshot is 110 base power and only 90% accuracy, meaning you only have a 10% chance to miss. Uh, however, when you're this frail, that 10% miss chance can spell death, so I would not be running point Gunshot uh, or Megahorn unless you need that extra power. Uh, if you need that extra power for the KO, then by all means run it and, you know, risk your life. <laughs> but, um... It's nicer to have that consistency on a frail Pokemon like Beedrill. Obviously, it's not as frail as it used to be. Far from it. Uh, but it's still relatively frail, especially given the high power levels in this hack. Uh, speaking of, that's why Lubitate's good, but I'm kind of jumping all over the place right now, so let me stay on topic. Uh, calcs. So, um, Poison Jab does 184. Or 155 to 184, right? So I'll just type that in my other monitor real quick. All right, uh, P jab, just so I know what I'm talking about. Okay, so that's the poison jab on Mega B drill. If you run non Mega B drill, so I'm not gonna actually change what it is. I'm just gonna change the stats. So 119, and then uh, sniper and uh, cross poison on a crit. 
Yeah, cross poison, ruthless cross poison is stronger than poison jab with adaptability. Significantly stronger at that. Um, if you remember, uh, poison jab was 155 to 184. Cross poison with ruthless is 190 to 224. So that is significantly stronger. In addition, um, in addition, Mega Beedrill has uh, incredible power with. Um, what am I trying to say here? Mega Beedrill is incredibly powerful. Sorry, base B drill is incredibly powerful with coverage moves. So adaptability only boosts your bug and poison step. And although your bug and poison step is better now, given the the better all the all the bug type offensive buffs, it doesn't change the fact that it's still not the best stab combination. Um, so a lot of things will still resist your stab, uh, or at least it will be neutral. And your super effective ruthless boosted moves are even stronger than those. So um, the main pro of Mega B drill is well, obviously it's still extremely powerful. Obviously, if, for example, if I change this calc to Gunk Shot, it's definitely going to out damage Cross Poison if I had to guess. Let's actually check. So Cross Poison, all right, is 190.6 to 224.2. So I have that copy pasted so I can reference back to it now. Let's put this back to Mega B drill stats. So 155, and uh, the ability is back to adaptability. All right. And now we're going to check uh, Gunk Shot, which is now 110, not 120. So, yeah, it's nerfed, but it's it's more accurate. So, um, and also the reason I had to do that, if you're wondering, is because uh, it was really early on because uh, the third Ulu Ulu Tutor, I felt like it was too strong. So I just dropped the base power a little bit, but I made it more accurate. So it's a fair trade. And it's also similar to moves like Iron Tail, Play Rough, same power. All of those are 110 base powers. So that's cool. Anyways, um, yeah, Gunk Shot out damages uh, Cross Poison. So, uh, actually, yeah, yeah, it does. Gunk Shot, so Cross Poison what, on base B drill was 190 to 224. Gunk Shot is 215 to 254. So you guys can see the difference there. However, Poison Job does not add damage. Um, so that puts it in perspective, hopefully. Um, and also, if you were using Cross Poison and you got a crit, obviously it's going to do more on Mega B drill, if I had to guess. Let's check. Uh, cross Poison was 190 to 224. Yeah, yeah. Mega B Cross Poison is much stronger or significantly stronger, but. Again, that's only 50% 50 of the time, so it's kind of inconsistent. Um, the non-crit cross poison is obviously weaker. So, yeah, I hope that puts it in perspective as to how strong they are. However, another really awesome thing that base B drill could do is Ruthless. So, aside from having, you know, your dual stabs and your Night Slash drill pet cross poison laceration, blah, 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 drill run, all this great coverage. Um, excuse me. You also have... Um, uh, 100, uh, moves that are... Gosh. Moves that always crit, right? So... Via TM, you actually have pretty early on access to first impression. Uh, that will be early Ulu Ula, very early Ulu Ula. One of the first TMs you get on Ulu Ula is first impression. So that's amazing. Um, you have to be the route boss, I believe, on uh, Mount Hokulani, I believe. Latakila? Hokulani? Hokulani, yeah, Mount Hokulani. Uh, you know, the route with Togodomaru, so to Togodomaru. So, um, or in Sun and Moon, Big Bolt. Um, so. First impression uh, is 60 base power, but it always crits, so it's 90 base power. But with Ruthless, it's 135 base power. So if you want to just slap a choice ban on your B drill and just click choice ban Ruthless first impression, that's just an incredible move. Um, you can also do first impression into U-turn to switch out again, or parting shot if you want to, uh, you know, have more utility. Uh, or obviously U-turn is very powerful, but part on shot is very nice for utility uh and both of those are tms of course so you can click first impression you could do a hit and run type play style or you can just um what the what another really oh god it's so really it's so strong so finishing blow is another awesome move that Pedro has that always crits so finishing blow is only 35 base power but with the crit that's 53 base power and then when you consider this the ruthless boost it becomes 79 base power so you have a 79 base power move on your 119 base attack, uh, that that um, will always crit. So that oh, another thing I have to mention is ruthless is also great because it ignores intimidate. Because if you're critting, you're not getting you know you're critting through the boost. It also ignores stat boost on the opponent. So um, if your opponent is using stat boosting moves, you can crit right through those as well. That's great. Um, Uh, so that's all good shit. Finishing Blow is amazing, though. So Finishing Blow is almost 80 base power, just below 80 base power, and that will uh, give you plus three attack when you kill something. It's Fell Stinger, if you can tell. Uh, it's Fell Stinger, just renamed, so I can do it to more mons. Um, and of course, it's also a crit move and whatever, so I figured the rename is relevant, is worth doing uh, for all those reasons. Uh, so yeah, First Impression into Finishing Blow is amazing, because First Impression is 135, and then Finishing Blow is almost 80. So in total, that will definitely one-shot 
most resistances in two turns. Uh, sorry, not resistance. Most neutral hits in two turns. As for resistances, obviously you have coverage moves for those. But um, and if, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure choice band press impression is probably chunking a resist anyways, um, just on the sheer power levels of it. Um, but yeah, finishing blow in a first impression or other way around uh, is incredible, incredible for Beedrill. Um, you also have regular setup with Swords Dance, um, but you are pretty frail, so it's kind of hard. But with finishing blow, you not only get a bigger boost, but you also are able to attack at the same time. So ruthless finishing blow, it's incredible. That's why it's so late level. It's at level 55, I believe, or 60. I have to check. I should probably switch finishing blow to dive bomb around. I'm going to do that just for balancing reasons because finishing blow is... I mean, there's a lot of other versus mons that have to get... Uh, English. Uh, that get finishing blow earlier, but... B drill specifically is just so like mega B drill so fast like you could really sweep pretty easily with finishing blow that early so finishing blows at 60 uh which is more fair that bomb is nice for uh flying type coverage if you don't want to run drill pick or if you're running mega B drill uh, it's very good strong flying type coverage because acrobatics won't work on mega B drill so um that bomb is essentially flying type high jump uh, high jump kick if you're curious by the way so um other important things that you have uh so again oh there's another ruthless move i did not cover yet um two more actually uh, let me also change that ability or that level up in the files now before I figure out because I'm gonna forget. Uh, just swap dive bomb and finishing blow. Finishing blow, dive bomb. Okay, and then B drill one, which is make a B drill slides. C -c -c Come on. Uh, finishing blow and dive bomb. All right, we're good. Sorry, y'all. Uh, oh, that could type properly. Come on. All right, we're good. Um, so. That is done. Um, God, it's so strong. So, of course, the main appeal of Mega Beedrill is the speed stat because the attack. Um, I'll run other here. I'll give you some other comparisons uh, damage wise. So, first impression. And of course, your coverage that isn't ruthless boosted is stronger. So, for example, uh, Mega Beedrill close combat is much stronger. Yeah, actually, I'll do a couple of comparisons. Let me let me do a couple of comparisons. So I'm going to compare like cross combat and uh, cross trap. Also, the other thing being that these are much later than these moves. Um, Close combat will be uh, one of the last teams you get. The second to last TM, I believe, if I remember correctly, or third to last, one of the last. It is in a uh, vast, vast Pony Canyon, and it is uh, before Totem Komo'o. All of the TMs are available before Totem Komo'o. Vast majority are available before that, but there's uh, like maybe ten or so that are available from uh, Ula Ula. Sorry, from all uh, from the start of Pony Island to the end, or not to the end, but to the first, to the last uh, Totem. And sorry, second to last Totem because there's Urbami. Sorry, guys, I'm really all over the place. Um, so you have Ruthless here, um, very good stuff. Uh, you have, uh, okay, I'll actually talk about this now before I do all those damage comparisons. Levitate, you might be, you, you know, that's, you might be thinking, Levitate kind of sucks, doesn't it? Like, it's, 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 it's just, you know, you have all this power, why would you ever run it? Um, the trained eye will, or not trained eye, but the skilled trainer, I guess? I don't want to sound condescending, uh, but people who know when to abuse certain abilities will take great advantage of levitate because you are a pretty frail pokemon obviously 65 65 65 is not terrible especially if you invest uh, especially compared to its old defensive stats but oh another thing i want to quickly mention is this bidef nerf uh or quote unquote nerf it's just i made the defenses equal because it didn't make sense that this motherfucker had so much special defense and so little physical defense it just didn't make sense to me um so yeah um what was I trying to say here? Um, God. Uh, levitate, yeah. So Levitate, uh, you have infinite ability capsules. So 90% of battles, you run Ruthless. In those 10% of battles where you need your Beedrill to switch in on that ground type move, you run that Levitate. And that will save your life in those situations because a strong Earthquake will probably still drop you in one hit. Uh, or any strong ground move at that. You know, a Drill Run, Megaton Kick, Earth Power, Lands Wrath, all these, you know, powerful moves. Um, being immune to all of those is amazing. Uh, being completely immune to any type is great in Pokemon, even if you resist that type, let alone being a frail, neutral hit. Uh, even Mega Beedrill is not paper thin. It's not paper thin, but it is frail still, relatively speaking, of course, especially for a Mega. Um, so, especially given the power level and the hack and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, it's really nice to be able to switch in on those ground moves, and then you can use those to wall certain Pokemon. You can use those to get a free switch in because of the higher power levels and the hack, and because of how strong certain Pokemon are. And because you're made to be playing on set battle style with no and healing items are actually uh, inherently disabled, uh, and then set battle style is intended, so you can't freely switch around. You're gonna have to use switch moves or manually switch out or run the uh, the infinite use eject button, uh, which is a really cool niche little thing that exists now. But uh, not niche actually, it's pretty good. But um, yeah, you have really cool stuff there because you can run levitate and 
completely bypass that kind of stuff and get your bijou in for free, which can be a hard task to do uh, sometimes in certain uh, boss fights. You're really going to want to use Levitate. So that's that. You also aren't always going to need that ruthless boost to get what you want to get done. You might uh, you might not always need that extra you know 50% boost to kill mons. You might just only need Levitate. Uh, so that's another reason to use Levitate. And of course, that's situational, but that's why you have infinite ability capsule. Uh, you just use that and you go boom and it changes. So that's great. Um, that being said, I want to compare some Ruthless and Adaptability uh, Mega Beedrill versus be Standard Beedrill uh, Calcs. So I'm actually going to... Uh, actually, I'll just do it this way. So Mega Beedrill, I'll just keep Mega Beedrill since it's currently in. Uh, we will test. I'm going to copy paste these, all right? Close Combat, Poison Jab, First Impression, which is a crit move. That's why I want to test it. And then, uh, I don't know, Lunge, I guess? is fine or i could do mega horn if i want to be that guy i'll do mega horn fuck it actually we already saw the poison jab calc so i'll do mega horn and lunge and i'll change the base power of all these obviously uh, in a second mega horn is 130 uh lunge is 85 first impression is 60 but it crits doesn't have to, not that it matters although it will matter for base speed drill um so yeah um here you go. So I uh, will copy paste these, all right? So this is on uh, a bomb of snow, so all of these are super effective uh, by two times. So that's a nice way to... All right. All right, now I have this copy paste it. I will, sh I will pull those up uh, in a minute. Actually, I will just duplicate and uh, do that. So now we have standard B drill. If I could just type in B drill again. Uh, okay, I guess we're doing standard B drill. It doesn't matter. Uh, scope lens. Um, 119, yep, 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 yep. And, uh, what was I doing here? I completely, oh, yeah, uh, Sniper. In this case, obviously, Ruthless. Uh, so, I will test Cross Chop instead of Close Combat, and I will test, uh, X Scissor instead of Mega Horn and Lunch, and then I will test First Impression as well. Um, so that's something nice. So, here we go. Oh, is this on? This doesn't sound right. Oh, these aren't on crits, the There we go. Yeah, I was gonna say those damage is way too low. What the fuck? Alright. Um so if you wanna look here, you could compare. So Ruthless Cross Chop does more than really? Damn. I mean I don't know why I'm surprised. 158 base power, but wait. Seriously? Huh. I'm just like looking back at it. Okay, well damn. Yeah, close combat is a significantly weaker. Really? This does not sound right. Oh, because of the power. Ha 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 ha. I knew I wasn't crazy. Uh, yeah, these should be 70. This should be 60. This knockoff, it doesn't matter. Uh, just make it stupid there. All right. That makes so much more sense. Um, so much more sense. God. Uh, cross chop. Okay, that makes way more sense. So, ruthless cross chop does actually out damage close combat on Mega Beedrill, Obviously, I mean, I, I kind of knew that, but I just wanted to show it. Um, so, there's a lot of situations, despite being almost 40 points slower. 121 base speed is still a great speed tier. Um, and another really cool thing you can do with Mega Beedrill is because of how fast you are. Say, for example, there is a Pokemon here. I'll just use a bonus now as a, as a reference. Obviously, it's not going to be this fast. <laughs> Say Obama Snow has one, 120 base speed, and it's Jolly Nature, uh, and then you have 160 base speed on your Mega Beedrill, you can actually speed creep, and I believe only about 100 EVs would be enough. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, zero? Oh my god. God, that is crazy. Yeah, you don't need any speed investment on a max speed Mega Beedrill to outspeed a max speed 120 base speed Pokemon. So that is insane. Um, Mega Beedrill, in a lot of cases, because you have the luxury as the player to change your sets based on the uh, occasion, you have the luxury of being able to do that so you can therefore um, God, it sounds like I'm trying to hit a word limit on an essay because I'm trying to stall for time so I can think of what I'm trying to say. Uh, so let me just take a second. Um, so what you can do is you can run max attack and then max physical defense with your base 70 defense. Base Beedrill does not have that ability because you're going to need to invest in that speed to outspeed certain things. Obviously, there'll be other cases where the fastest mon on their team is base 100 speed. You know, therefore, of course, go ahead and run uh, that kind of thing. Let me take a sip of my water. Um, so that's all good stuff right there. Um, yeah, I am just trying to show damage here. So. Megahorn has 130 base power is significantly 
stronger than Ruthless Exorcist with adaptability. So there you go. However, Lunge, which is 85 base power, uh, is weaker than Exorcist. However, the advantage of Lunge is that it always drops defense, so you're getting a minus one defense. Your next hit will be, let's say, I let's say I put this uh, motherfucker at minus one defense real quick. Your second Lunge is doing more than your first exit than your Exorcist. However, two in a row. I mean, you could do the math there, but I'm too lazy to do it. Uh, put this back to neutral so I can show the damage again. All right, so that's lunge. Lunge is weaker than Exorcist. Mega Horn's obviously stronger with adaptability, but of course the risk there is that you're gonna miss. Um, U turn, U turn on Mega Beedrill is much stronger than with B base Beedrill. That's great. Um, come on, where am I trying to go? Uh, and then you also have uh, First Impression, which is uh, significantly uh, stronger on. Uh, oh wait, interesting. Really. I guess it is the same boost. Yeah. So the reason I was surprised is because adaptability is a flat two times boost. Meanwhile, uh, Ruthless stacks and becomes a 2.25. So essentially, Ruthless is 25% stronger than adaptability. So um, I was figuring that 25% of 119 would be stronger than 155, but I guess I'm wrong. Um, my mental math isn't always perfect. Yeah. Mega Beedrill of First Impression is stronger. Um, but, of course... Oh, wait, what am I talking about? You don't need Scope Lens! Yeah, I knew I, Okay, I knew I wasn't crazy. You don't need Scope Lens. Um, I mean, if you're running no boosting item, then yeah, it's stronger, obviously. But I was assuming that you're running a boosting item. So, yeah, if you're going to run uh, Choice Band on your base Beedrill, right here, I ignore the speed set, this is just for, you know, showing stuff. Um, let's say you run a Choice Band. Choice Banded uh, First Impression is, is so powerful. Uh, compared to Mega B Drill's first impression, which is, is 209 max. This is 289 max, so that's insane. How that puts it into perspective, guys. Of course, your coverage moves are roughly going to be stronger. For example, Drill Run, there's no stronger equivalent to that. That's the strongest it is. So Ruthless is definitely to go for uh, Drill Run. Uh, Needle Bash, for example, would probably would be much stronger on Mega B Drill because uh, Needle Bash is not a crit move. Therefore, Base B Drill. Um, base B Drill. What am I trying to say here? Base B Drill. Uh, does less damage with Needle Bash than Mega Beedrill does. Um, so that's that. Um, I hope that explains a lot of stuff. So that is the advantages. Those are the pros and cons of both. Uh, Beedrill de genuinely does out damage Mega Beedrill in certain cases, but of course Mega Beedrill is much quicker uh, and slightly bulkier, and the speed is a, such a good tool to the point where you can run defensive investment or HP investment, uh, and you also can uh, deal a lot more damage with your stab moves um, overall. So that's something to consider. Ruthless, you know, you bypass Intimidate and stuff. Mega Beedrill doesn't. So again, look at the opponent's team. Look at their team in the sheets. Decide which of those two you would rather have for that fight. Of course, if you want another Mega Evolution, then using base Beedrill is totally fine. Um, you know, on your team currently at that time for that battle. Uh, so that's all good and fun. Um, I have not even touched the pre-evolutions yet. I am sorry. I need to talk about them. But quickly, I will also go through all of Beedrill's other stuff. So, obviously, adaptability is great. You have powerful stuff like Mega Horn and Lunch. You have power I already covered all those stabs, so I don't need to cover those. But um, lastly, with Ruthless, so you have... Um, if this would open, please. You have First Impression, Finishing Blow. You have Sky Attack um, via Tutor, which is nice with Power Herb because Sky Attack becomes 180 base power when you crits, and then if you add Ruthless on top of that, it's 270 base power, because Sky Attack is 120 base power, but it always crits now. So it's essentially like almost like a pseudo Z move in that sense. Um, so that's really powerful. And then you also have access to Wicked Blow at level 65, which is a 80 base power dark type move that is 90% accurate, um, and that's just really, really strong. Uh, and it's really nice coverage. Um, you know, stronger than Night Slash, you can run Choice Band, Wicked Blow, First Impression, Finishing Blow, and Filler Move. And you're big chilling. I mean, you're sweeping with those, uh, assuming that everything dies to those, you know, dark end bug coverage, which is easier said than done. But you get the idea. I plus your attack, they probably would. But yeah, um, you could really make work of like cleaning up teams as well with Beedrill. Like with that finishing blow, you can especially Mega Beedrill. Just how fast it is with finishing blow. All you have to do is pick something off, or not even pick something off. Like that's not, like, it's strong enough to just two shot things with it on its own because of how strong finishing blow is. Um, being on Mega Beedrill, it's only a 53 base power, but that's still plenty strong when you have 155 base attack and adaptability. So um, yeah. Again, close combat. They have takedown, which is earlier for dark type coverage. Sorry, fighting type coverage, which is really useful on them. Cross top, drill run, uh, acrobatics, sky attack, fury pecs, drill peck, and dive bomb. Dive bomb being flying type high jump kick. Fury pecs being a multi hit move. Uh, 
you have access to, um, hold on, let me take a sip of my water. All right, we're good now. Um, so you have Brick Break as well, um, which is 85 base power now. So that's nice if you don't want to risk, or you don't want the takedown recoil or something on Mega Beedrill for some reason, although you probably just better be able to click in close combat. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't, but you know, certain situations are situational, but also because it breaks through screens. So if like the opponent has screens or something, that's there. Um, laser focus is really cool. Z laser focus gives you plus two speed. So you can use laser focus and like mega horn on B drill or something, or laser focus in U-turn with ruthless sets. Um, another good thing is that's how you abuse the ruthless early game. So ruthless early game is not as good because you don't get access to these 50% crit moves till later. However, with focus energy and then scope lens, so you get focus energy when you evolve into B drill and then scope lens is in Peniola Ranch. So, uh, you know, you run scope lens, focus energy, you're critting all your moves with Ruthless. Uh, and obviously that takes a turn of setup, but then you're critting all your moves and you're getting that huge boost from Ruthless and you can go to town uh, and spam your moves. Additionally, focus energy plus pin missile, fury swipes and fury pecs all have very high rates to crit because you get multiple hits, multiple chances to crit. Um, you have, uh, okay, I think that means I've been at 30 minutes or 15 minutes only. Is it second time it's looped or first time? I can't. At last time it was 15 minutes ago, so if I had to guess, that means I must have just started this 15 minutes ago, I guess. Or I just edited something randomly and didn't talk about it. But either way, um, if, I'm, if I'm at 15 minutes, then I'm actually proud. I, I think I'm actually on a decent pace now. Uh, been shortening these videos up a little bit. Obviously, they're still very long, but yeah. Uh, substitute's great, but uh, that's not important right now. Um, everything has that. What am I trying to say here? Uh, yeah, laser focus, focus energy, multi-hit moves, all that. Those are the ways you abuse uh, Ruthless early game is my point, you know, before you get access to these crit moves. Slash is pretty early at 33, so that's really strong. And of course, later you get the coverage moves. Um, excuse me, I took a sip of my water. Okay, um, important coverage is Needle Bash for Grass type and Solar Blade uh, under the sun is good as well or z, z, z solar blade if you wanted to do that as well um <clears throat> no bash is great to wallop ground types and um other pokemon as well rock types etc um obviously you have cross chop for those but you know or laceration or drill run but those are not always going to die to that you know for example needle bash is good when it's four times effective it's good against water types good against ground um really good stuff there really useful coverage move uh especially on mega beat drill um another really cool thing that beach can do is at level 50 uh, it gets acclimate so Acclimate make a beach acclimate a piece be drill. Uh, so what acclimate does is it changes your typing to match whatever moves on move is on top of your learn set. So say for example you run acclimate and I don't know the uh, close combat. You will get plus one to all of your stats with the Z move, and then you'll become a pure fighting type, and you'll be able to click stab close combat with plus one attack and plus one speed, and obviously plus one defenses, which actually is pretty decent when you have 65, 65 bulk. Um, so that's some cool stuff, and you can change to any type of your coverage moves. It's niche, but it's nice. I just think it's cool to have uh, even more use of base speed drill, although you already have immense use with Ruthless and Scope Lens and, and all these other crit moves. Uh, you can also run Z Acclimate with Ruthless and Wicked Blow. Goodness gracious, that is powerful. Um, because Wicked Blow always crits. You don't need to worry about that. Um, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, you don't need to worry about running a Sculpt Lens. So you can then run Normalium Z with Acclimate and click that Wicked Blow. 10% of the time, you're going to be fucked and miss. But that 90% of the time you hit that move, you're going to be doing immense damage with a Stab Wicked Blow with Ruthless boosted and plus one attack and plus one speed from the Acclimate Z Acclimate boost. So that's a really powerful option. But of course, that is still niche because it takes up an entire move slot. And Beedrill really wants its move slots um, for coverage and stab. Uh, so yeah, because you have tons of great utility moves here and all this other great stuff um so it depends on what you need but it's still there is a really cool option to have uh you can also do it with dive bomb become flying type whatever it is you know whatever you need for that boss fight if you want to become a type that'll sweep then you become that type um it's really cool stuff um not too much else to cover for the base beedrill honestly uh home claws is nice with mega horn and gunk shot if you don't want to worry about those missing you can also use smart strike to get plus one accuracy when you click it uh, that's a buff to smart strike 75 base power you get plus one accuracy so you can use smart strike in conjunction with uh mega horn and gunk shot and needle bash or dive bomb or wicked blow those are all cool um you can also just run wide lens that's a totally valid option uh wide lens ruthless with wicked blow is great um Wildlands will not miss because it's a 50% chance to boost, uh, 15% boost to your accuracy. All right, 
last part of the video. All right, last part. I will talk about the important uh, stuff. It, it not important, but the the elephants in the room that I haven't addressed yet is uh, Weedle and Kakuna. So they are rebalanced to evolve at level ten and twenty. Twenty evolving just in time for Hala, uh, similar to Caterpie and Metapod. And all the other regional bugs like uh, Wurmple and stuff will follow the same trend of having usable first forms that evolve by the trainer school. So by the time you get to trainer school, you'll you'll have probably an evolved Weedle or like when you get to the trainer school teacher lady, like you will definitely have a, uh, a Kakuna at that point. Uh, you'll definitely be, her boss will definitely be at least level 10, probably level 10. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, Kakuna is there. Um, as well, so what these two are, so Weedle is much stronger and it has uh, actual moves now. So uh, you start off with dual stab priority and creeping strike and poison dart, and then you have string shot for utility and tackle just for a neutral hit on something. Then you get toxic threat at level eight. So that's great because you can uh, lower their speed. It's, 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 essentially, it's just better string shot. It's, it's string shot, but it paralyzes, but it poisons. So string shot is minus four speed, minus four evasion. Toxic threat is minus four speed, minus four evasion. Also, Z toxic threat gives you plus one to all your stats. Although the Omni boost on its own isn't really worth it on Mega Beedrill, in my opinion. Although it could be, I mean, it's almost like a Dragon Dance boost with some bulk, so it could be worth it. But I wouldn't keep toxic thread the whole time just for that. Personally, you could, you could, you could but I would just use that at that point. Unless you don't want to change your type, I guess, and you want to stay bug poison, which is uh, totally valid. Um, so yeah, double stat priority, um, Fury Cutter at level 10, which is powerful, um, and then you have access to Bar Barrage, and, um, which is a 60 base power move, it hits 3 times, so it's 20 base power per hit, and it always poisons, um, so that's really nice, and then you have Molt for reliable recovery, um, of course we have Roost via TM on, on Beedrill, but to have Molt on Kakuna for, like, the first totem, uh, you know, totem gum shoes, etc. It's nice to have molt there. Uh, just as uh, for, versus Iloma, for example, you'll have molt uh, Kakuna, which is really bulky and can really tank some hits from uh, his team. Um, Harden's there for setup as well with molt Harden plus molt. You can actually like set up. It's just kind of funny, um, <laughs> and it has more than five PP, so you can actually get the plus six defense if you really wanted to do it. Um, and you can also poison install book one, so it's a good Pokemon. Like it's it's bulky. 50, 85, 60 is good for early game. It's very bulky. Um, and then um, I could have gone more defense and less attack, but I don't know. I just it, it, the Kakuna especially has those little arms, so I think it works. Um, obviously, they don't show them in battle game anymore, but it does have arms canonically. It has those little hand thingies. Um, I wonder if I can probably even show art of it in the or just early artwork. Okay, there's no artwork of it having the arms, but it does have arms. Uh, technically. I like a little bow tie. Anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, Baneful Bunker is nice as well. And then you get all these other moves when you evolve and all, um, you know, all this other good stuff that I already talked about. Um, yeah, oh, abilities. Last thing is the abilities of the babies. So Sap Sipper seems weird. They eat, well, they eat plants, they're a little worm, they eat leaves and shit. Um, eat leaves and uh, sap sipper logic. Technically, all it is is that if they're herbivores, they can have sap sipper. Technically, uh, any herbivore mon could technically get sap sipper if I wanted to, um, because the Japanese name is herbivore or something, or herbivorous, herbivorous or something. So, or herbivore, but I say herbivore, herbivore. Um, so that's really useful because early game you're immune to stuff like leech seed. So although you do four times with this bug, this is literally only for level 10. Like this is only going to come up in like one battle, maybe versus like how or something. If he has like a leech seed rowlet or something, you can swap it in on that leech seed rowlet. Or like versus a trainer school person, if they have leech seed, you switch it in and get that plus one attack. It's niche, but it's there. Yeah, and of course you have infinite ability capsules, so you can swap. And then poison touch is your much more conventional good ability. Um, creeping strike is contact and fury cutter is contact and tackle is contact. So those three moves will have a 30% chance to poison. Uh, but then you, of course, get Barbarage at level 10 and you evolve, which always poisons, so it defeats the purpose. But, you know, just for the first, like, four battles of the game until you hit level 10. Uh, I don't know why I'm going into so, deep, so much detail about something you have for literally, like, five levels. Um, Kakuna as much as really good again with the stats and the moves and uh also having good two good abilities battle armor is niche, but it's this there. I mean, it's nice if you're running hard end sets. Um, if you're same goes for uh. Metapod, like I, like I told you yesterday, uh, in the be, be, uh, English, in the Butterfree video, um, you have Battle Armor for Harden Set, and also just to not have to worry about getting crit. If you don't need Sturdy for that fight, it's just nice to not have to worry about crits. Um, and then Sturdy is obviously amazing, um, just to be able to live any hit no matter what, and get any hit, any move off. So you can live any hit and get a, uh, a um, you know, a poison move off, or, or a bar barrage off, or you can molt, or whatever you want to do. So that's all good stuff. On um, Molt, also, if you guys are not familiar, is a 50% recovery move. It's just for cover. So, yeah. Um, I think that covers about everything. 
Thank you for listening to this one. This is probably a longer one. I'm sorry, y'all, but I will be better with the Crobat video, which I'll be doing literally immediately after this one, because uh, that's the that's the Jodo Dex order is is Crobat after Ariados. So, yeah. Thanks, everyone.